you don't give me what I want, I will release proof that you are a homosexual. I came out 30 years ago. Ah, you're impossible. Franco Sullivan, head of the Patrolman's Union, and there is no way on God's green earth that you're ever talking to anyone involved in this case. Officer Lee called me, and I'm here to stop your heartless crusade against our heroes in blue. But to be clear, all I want is to keep our city safe and then to go home to my mom at night. You live with your mom? My mom lives with me in her house and i'm sorry Stop talking what's going on here were you about to say the s word the s word sorry oh, good god don't say it out loud man why are you here o'sullivan peralta isn't even in the patrolman's union i'm here to protect marzipan he and peralta worked very closely together on this one seriously peralta marzipan with all the open ie investigations against them i've met him like one time i don't even know his first name his name is david David Duke Marzipan. David Duke Marzipan? Hey, don't you go profiling him for what he changed his name to. You can't judge a book by its cover. You can if it's written by David Duke. OK, O'Sullivan, there's McCaffrey coming out of Purdue Pet Supplies with the mouse that he put in the burrito. So there's no need for tactical gear or a never forget burrito ribbon or any of that. You need to call off the blue flu. Are you crazy? My guys are under attack. No, I just proved that it wasn't an attack. He faked it. Not that attack. This attack. The one where you call a policeman a liar. He is a liar. Oh, dear my God, you just did it again. Do you understand the worst thing you can do to another person is to call that person a liar? You hate cops. That's a fact. I, I, I just thought the blue flu was about a mouse and a burrito. Well, it was, but now it's about you saying it wasn't. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So you're calling me stupid? That's not what I said. You're calling me a liar. I just don't know how to talk to someone like you. Someone like me? Wow. That's racist. Oh, this is a very frustrating conversation. Do you have something against my ma? Because I'll be honest with you, there's only three things that I love in this whole world. My ma, the NYPD, and Billy Joel. And right now, you're assaulting two of those three things. Wow, so Billy Joel made your top three. And now you've assaulted all three. Can we please just talk to Officer Lee? Look, these are nice boys that you're going after. All the perp had to do was show them what was in the bag. But no, no, she had to escalate things. A finger was broken. Do you understand that if anyone else was being treated the way our brave officers are being treated, they'd be marching in the street, which I would oppose, by the way, because marching leads to rioting, and rioting leads to looting. OK, this doesn't seem like it's going to be a short rant. Yeah, we're going to head out. You the guy selling the memorabilia? Oh, yeah. Where'd you get this stuff? I used to haul amps for him. Yeah? Which tours? The, uh, you know. Oh, Terry. I'm not ready to say goodbye. I'm not ready to say goodbye to her. I've never heard of that one. You haven't? Well, that's weird. Maybe you just weren't paying attention. Sorry. I'm on Billy Joel's wiki now. I've done other tours, too. Like, uh. Innocent Man and the Bridge. Innocent Man and the Bridge. OK. What's in the box? An early draft of the lyrics to We Didn't Start the Fire. Eisenhower, vaccine, side salad, mixed greens. Why that's that? Well, I guess while he was writing a song, he must have accidentally included his lunch order. Anyway, that's 10K. No, that's a sticky stuff. Yes. I grabbed it out of the trash in his dressing room. It must be gum. Look, I'm so sorry. Just let me have that. Ah, uh, uh, that's so fast. This has been in William Martin Joel's mouth. His tongue touched this. Wait, what's happening? What's this now? That is $10,000, and I'll keep it a go. Oh, there she is, my arch nemesis. You're a cop, O'Sullivan. Shouldn't your arch nemesis be a criminal? No. OK, what do you want? Well, I came here to reach a truce with you over your pilot program that persecutes the uniformed officers in my union. It's a is to reduce instances in which armed cops are needlessly interacting with civilians. It could save lives and restore trust with the community. That's persecution, plain and simple, but I don't want to fight with you. I'd rather be civilized and reach some common ground over a drink. It's the middle of the day. Well, that's how business gets done in the real world. Look, I'm not changing the pilot program. Okay, have it your way, but I gotta say, you're going to be sorry. Are you threatening me? No. I'm informing you that I hold a lot of power, and unless you're willing to play ball with me, I will wield said power against you. Again, not a threat, but go ahead and change your mind or else. Peralta made a mistake. Holy it's crap. Right. You did not use the M word, did you? No? Oh, thank God. Because the M word's just about the worst thing you can say if you're a cop. Besides, the real point here is, what was the perp doing snooping around a bus lot at night? The victim cuts through that lot on his way home when it's open. And it was open because Peralta picked the lock. What a bunch of bunk. Why'd the perp run away unless he was guilty of something? Because he was understandably scared of interacting with the cop. I see. Well, that excuse hasn't worked in the last 15 cases against Marzipan. I don't think it'll work now. 15? Peralta, I can make all of this disappear. That's what the police union does. But you you gotta play ball with me, son. What do you say? 
You two are sure you want to be involved with this? Investigating O'Sullivan? Yeah, that dude sucks. He tried to blackmail me. You don't stop harassing my officers. I will release proof that you are bisexual. I already came out. Oh, come on. You can't blackmail anyone anymore. Tell us what's written there. Patient's left testy is gnarled and shows discoloration. No, not that. There, at the top. Sherecam Medical Laboratories, yes, yeah, so? So, we thought it was the doctor handing out fake diagnoses, but he's clean. However, the officers knew he used Sherecam Lab, and that lab is owned by David Sher, brother of 99 officer Michael Sher. The lab faked the blood results. None of the officers are actually sick, which means they have no excuse to miss work. Well, unfortunately, that Stop. is... Stop. I know you're going to twist my words into some vicious attack on you and the NYPD. So before you do that, I'd like the pleasure of making the vicious attack myself. Oh, sir, your insults are kind of known to be a little too thinky. Maybe you should just let oh, me Sullivan, do it. Oh, Sullivan, you are a And I hope your could shove right into your Wow. Well, that was definitely not too thinky. OK, 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 you got me. The men didn't have mono, they weren't sick. Damn right. But they are now. What? It seems they had a meeting and somebody showed up with a very bad stomach bug and gave it to everyone there. I believe the officer's name was a uh, Lieutenant Jeffords. OK, so here's the plan. O'Sullivan likes to do deals over drinks. So I invite him to Shaw's and order us a couple beers. I nod along as he talks about how surprisingly cool his mom is. Order more beers. I also nod along as he talks about how horrible his ex-wife is. Order more beers. I also nod along as he kind of implies he wishes his mom was his wife. Nobody spoons like my mom. But I'm not the only one who's listening. O'Sullivan's a blowhard, so he just needs a little push. Get him drunk enough. Eventually, he'll just come out and admit that he set Jake up. The plan is flawless. So there's one flaw with my plan. O'Sullivan oh, isn't even buzzed, and you're totally hammered. I'm so hammered. You know how guys like O'Sullivan, they think we all look the same, right? So you dress as Amy, you take my place, and oh my god, is Nine Drink Amy a genius? That's never going to work. You just need to sober up and get back out there. Oh, you're on the floor. What's going on here? Uh, nothing. Nothing? I distinctly remember you saying we were moving on to shots, and yet you bring us more beers? You got to do a better job than that, San Diego. Right, right. I guess we'll just have to shoot these then. Yes, we <laughs> will. Help. I'm so drunk. He's had 14 beers, and he's not even slurring his words. Well, I feel better. I had some floor pretzels. Let's switch places again. Yes, two of us can now drink that son of a bitch. Nice to you, San Diego. All the best. Bottoms up. Whoa, Nelly. There's to you. <laughs> well, now, what the hell am I looking at? Nothing. Uh -huh. Oops. You're drunk and you're seeing double. Oh, give me a break. You can't really think I'm that stupid. I mean, we've been switching places for the last two hours and you didn't notice, so. It's because I don't look at women's eyes when I'm talking to them. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? Learning a lesson? You know what I mean? Lessons to learn. You didn't do anything wrong. What do you want, O'Sullivan? This is Mel Jenkins, city attorney in charge of payoffs and bribes. Uh, not my title. I handle tort claims. Whatever. Mel and I just had ourselves a little chat over morning drinks. More drinks? Relax. It was just a couple of breakfast beers. So, the department is going to settle without admitting any wrongdoing, and because the facts of the case will remain unresolved, there will be no suspension for marzipan or Peralta. Come on now, these are cops. They gotta make split second decisions in life or death situations, and they can't be expected to get that 100% correct every single time. This was not a life or death situation. Sure, but next time it might be, and how can this one be expected to do his job when he knows that any teeny tiny lapse in judgment could end with you branding him a dirty cop and ruining his life? Oh, come on. Who do you think broke the vending machine that got Detective Flattop all riled up, stole Detective Little Guy's candy shipment, and swapped out Sergeant Muscle Guy's candy for seasonal fruit? Your people. Bingo. And it's driving your guys crazy. Now, if your precinct would like to get their candy back, I'd be willing to negotiate. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So when you told Jake you could get him out of his suspension, that wasn't blackmail? If I'm passionate about one thing, it's getting cops off without punishment. How dare you turn that into something dirty? Shame on the both of you. So, I gather you're ready to cave to my demands. Why would I do that? Give me a break. Your arrests are way down, and your comp stat numbers are terrible. I think those numbers look great. No, you don't. Well, not those numbers. Obviously, they make it look like we haven't done much at all this week. But a friend of mine told me something unintentionally interesting. Focus on what you didn't do. So, here's what we didn't do this week. With few
fewer officers at our disposal and none of them trying to hit Comstat numbers, we made fewer bad arrests. Number of complaints against officers down 32%. Number of cases thrown out at arraignment for insufficient evidence down 34%. And here's the most important thing we didn't do. We didn't make the community less safe. Rates of major and violent crime, what actually matters, stayed the same. What do you say? I'm saying the 99 just became a case study for how a police force can work better with fewer police. Are you actually talking about laying off cops? If these numbers persist, I may have no choice. But I'll just end the blue flu. Great, that's what I want. Then I won't end the blue flu. Great, fewer cops. That's what I want. Yeah, just said that. Th this is a very frustrating conversation.